right, hello everybody. It is January 4th, 2023. We've crossed into that new year. Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, we are coming to you live uh, as Tech Talk on both Facebook and YouTube. So thanks for joining us. Welcome, Genrite Nation. That's, uh, that's our new greeting for 2023. And um, we're here to talk about your favorite subject and mine, Jeeps. How to build them, how to drive them, everything related. So uh, thanks for joining us. Um, as always, if uh, you'd like to ask a question, please just type in a comment and uh, include whatever information you can. And that'll help me uh, get the basis to answer your question. And um, let's see, I don't have a featured product today. So um, I think what we're going to do is, uh, um, oh, well, no, not yet. Okay. Actually, we're going to talk about a uh, couple things. <clears throat> so first is, um, I wanted to tell everybody that if you were one of the winners from our Christmas giveaway, the last of the stuff has been packed and is sent out tomorrow. It's all done and labeled. Some of the stuff went out before Christmas. So um, if you're one of those lucky ones, then God bless you. That's awesome. Um, what we're going to talk about today is that I hopped in my Aftershock JL and took a 2,000 mile road trip from basically the Los Angeles area where we are all the way out through Williams, Sedona, and on to uh, Albuquerque and Santa Fe, New Mexico. And then worked my way back, uh, all the way back uh, home. So um, it was a fun trip. I had uh, Josh from Trails Off-Road join me. And um, you probably, if you watched my last Tech Talk last week, we were shivering inside my Jeep because it was 28 degrees outside. And um, us, you know, warm-blooded Southern Californians I was not about to go outside and try and do a tech talk in the wind and snow. So uh, <laughs> anyways, so this this was the uh, basically the trip we had planned. We did stop and wheel a couple of things. Um, so we showed you a video from where we wheeled in Sedona last time. So now I'm going to show you another video between Albuquerque and uh, Santa Fe. So we'll turn the camera and I'll show the video. Um, I'm going to talk while the, uh, the video is going because it's a little bit hard to hear the, the TV. Um, so basically, oh, and before I start, I actually want to point out, you can see the hood vents on my jail are wide open. That's, that's how you let a lot of heat out of there. So um, good, easy thing to point out while we're staring right at it. Okay. You all set, James? Yeah. Okay. So we... We did went to Trails Off-Road on our phone, and we checked for uh, trails in our area, and it showed us Sandia Peak. This is just outside of Albuquerque. Um, we're at about 5,000 foot elevation right where I am right here, and we're going to go around the back and uh, pick up one of these roads that takes you all the way up like 8,500 feet. Um, you can see there's already a dusting of snow where we're at, and it's just going to get thicker and deeper as we go. So that's, that, that was actually pretty cool. And um, there are, what, what I stopped to talk about here was the Sandia Cave. Um, we never found it, but it, it is up there. Um, the, trail was, the trail was covered in snow. So that was just part on the way. I'm glad you think that's funny, Joe. <laughs> there is a Sandia Cave, but we never found it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might be easier when there's no snow, but uh, whatever. Um, it was, it was just part of the fun. So you can see, um, the road was snow and icy. Um, it, it worked out pretty good and, uh, we just kind of plugged along. There you go. Plugging along at a reasonable speed. And, um, you can see that the Mickey Thompson tires, that tread pattern is clearing out really good. And, um, that, that was, I, rarely do I get a chance to show, how well it clears out. I tried to do it when we were at Jeep Beach just to show the sand clearing out, but this with the snow is even better. Okay, this is where we stopped in the little parking area to try and find the cave. So I was like, cool, let's walk up here and see what we can find. So you're gonna see me walking in the snow through some thick brush. And uh, it turned out I was actually going the wrong way. I looked it up later. Here I am <laughs> looking for broken ankle here in the, the snow and slippery rocks and stuff. 
And then uh, we heard some kind of a wild, I don't know if it was a wolf or a dog or what, but it sounded mean. So um, we just kept working our way up. And again, you know, here you can see the, the tires spitting out, even, even at a slow rate of speed, clearing out the snow, which is uh, rarely do we get this kind of video where you can actually see it working. So that was kind of cool. And um, again, we just worked out. Here you can actually see the EXS suspension working quite nicely. Um, that This thing rides so nice. It was, it was awesome to take a Jeep on 40s on a 2,000 mile road trip, you know. So here I'm at one of the hiking trailheads. There's probably eight different trailheads for hikes along the way right here. And um, we're almost at the top. You can see um, it is actively snowing. I don't know if you can see on your little screen, whatever you're watching on, but there's snow falling as I'm talking here. And uh, we're just talking about what a cool area is. And I'll, I'll bet in the summertime, this is probably... Uh, because you're up higher in elevation, uh, actually a very nice place to be in the summertime. Probably find that cave too. Probably. <laughs> so that was the little parking area for that. So um, just keep rolling along. All right, so here I stop to talk about one of the things that Mickey Thompson does is they add additional silica, okay? And silica is part of the tread compound and it actually makes the tire more sticky as it gets wet or cold. And um, it, it really makes a difference, almost like a sticky um, in that. And then I start talking about the tread pattern and how it clears out. And it's cool that you can actually see it sitting there for both the front and the rear, you know, almost identical, popped right out of the tread. So, um, Again, rarely do you get that opportunity to explain that to people and how well all this stuff works in this design. Because this is one of the latest design tires from, you know, all the different companies. So that's, that's pretty cool. And again, we did a little slow-mo so you can see all that stuff just flinging out of the tire. And we're not even going that fast. If you had really sped it up, you know, that tire would be completely clean. So, um, but, you know, great opportunity to show everybody how well those Mickey Thompsons. And, and by the way, the, the ATs um, work very well too. So I just happen to be running the MTs. Here, what I wanted to show you was how slippery it was. I had decided that I wanted to back up and go over to a parking area. And it was so slippery. Now, I didn't air down or anything. You know, we're just out there kind of goofing around. It was so slippery that just with the slight slope on the, the little uh, fire road, you know, that the, the thing was slipping all over the place. Then, um, what I did was I stopped and I turned off the lockers because I wanted to show people, a lot of people don't understand what lockers do. And they don't understand that when you put it in four wheel drive, you actually only have one front wheel and one rear wheel, even though you've chosen four wheel drive, that's only if the traction is the same on all four tires. So here you can actually see how one tire is spinning more than th those two tires are obviously not connected and uh, you really don't get much. Then what I do is I stop for a second, I turn on the lockers and then you're going to see me back up and the thing just backs right up and it's obviously all four wheels are connected. My switch pro right there, you can see the lights on. We talked about why I mounted it there on the last tech talk. And now it just backs up like you're like it's nothing. So it's it's cool. Um, again, just I, I, it was a great opportunity to show people that difference again. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more here in just a second with some of our examples. Um, the video is almost done. Bear with me here. Um, uh, again, I'm I'm describing what I'm just talking to you about right now. So it'll get past this and and. We're talking about the slip and why you need lockers. I we'll mean, we'll post this video too. Yeah, you could just go next if you want to. Yeah, are we? Is this the end of it? I don't remember if this is the end. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how. I think they got the. Looks so good in the snow. Yeah. And you know, snow driving. Um, a lot of Californians aren't used to that, but it takes really smooth throttle if you do anything wild you're just spinning like you're out of control well it's, it's good practice for not breaking traction it it really is it's really good so now we've come down the mountain um 
had a great time, you know, just talking about everything. Um, while we were stopped, I unlocked my hubs and we were ready to get back on the road. So, um, and I, I think, oh, by the way, I was going to point out like somewhere on the trip, I took like something huge, like a lug nut, just boom. Was it a swinging branch? Uh, no, it was not a swinging <laughs> branch. There was cool little streams and, you know, stuff out there. So it, it was, it was great. We practically had the place for ourselves. We, uh, right down at the bottom of the hill, we found a little, uh, local cafe, grabbed some grub and then, uh, hit the road for Santa Fe. So it was pretty cool. All right. So let's go next, Jamie said. Yeah. If it, yeah the if fast it, forward. No, 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 no. You, no. you gotta hit the left or the right arrow. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Right. Other right? No, that one? Yeah, that one. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what... You have time for a question? Uh, sure, I can pause. Hang on for a second. Pause. Okay, question. Okay. 2005 TJ Rubicon. I've watched pretty much all your videos and tech talks. Never heard you mention anything about the shock angle. I'm moving, I am moving my rear back nine inches and the front forward hopefully four inches. 16 inch shock. Your shock mounts. What degree of shock angle relative to the axle should I be shooting for? Ah, this is a great question. Um, let me car. Yeah, let me hang on, I'm gonna set that down. <clears throat> so okay, can you see me on the screen right now, Jim? Uh, if you're in front of the TV, yes. Yes, yes. okay. So what you're after is at ride height the level of the control arm, right? So it would be up a little bit. The shock would be perpendicular to the control arm. So 90 degrees from the control arm at ride height. That is the angle. Okay. So that would lay it back slightly with our mounts. Out. Out? Yeah, so yeah. you do need to have, you need to have some angle, you know, to the shock so that when you articulate, this never goes past straight up and down. Okay, so if, if the shock rotates in too far, like this, then it's gonna do something really weird when it sets back down. And uh, you don't wanna do that. You, you never want the, the shock to pass vertical. Yeah, good, very good question. I, I usually only get that question when somebody's in the throes of building their Jeep, for sure. Um, we're getting a lot of comments that people like Andrew's RC car. Nice. They want to know if it's the tracer suspension. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> but they are curry axles <laughs> that he spent a fortune for. It's for sale. Yeah, is it? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, more questions or keep going? Uh, we got one more from YouTube. I have a TJ and want to put aftermarket JK axles under it for the added strength width. What would you recommend? Um, okay, so first off, the only thing that a JK stock JK axle is going to offer you is added width. There, there is no additional strength. I wouldn't. I mean, unless you had a 35 and a 30, and you're going to JK 44s, then you're going to get a little bit more strength. But you know, don't fool yourself. You're not going over a 37. Okay. So, um, and remember, you're going to have to buy new wheels because your old Jeep was five on four and a half, and now you're five on five. So although they look the same, when you go to put them on, it's not gonna fit. So just keep those things in mind. It will be wider. We'd recommend the Currys. I would recommend the Currys, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, you're, you're gonna go from like 63 inches wide to 67. So it's two inches per side, so. And then still, if you're on coilovers, you're gonna want wider. Yeah, so. to get the right backspacing yeah. and stuff, yeah. All right, uh, we have one more question. Sure. Be caught up. Sure. Off topic, sorry. Does the SSV MRB3 Bluetooth, aud Bluetooth audio with screen and amp, does that allow you to make phone calls and answer phone calls? Since uh, I have a 2004 Jeep LJ. Yeah, good question. Um, the answer is no, because there's no microphone, right? So you're, you're still going to need to pick up the call. There's no wireless, you know, like hands free option on that. Um, yeah, it really wasn't designed for that. It was just designed for music. music yep. Yeah. All so, right, we're all caught up. Question. Okay, so this is from our friends over at Eaton. And uh, this is just to show you that 
Although, like I talked about, you put it in four wheel drive, you've really only got one tire. So when, when both tires have equal traction, you will have equal drive on both tires. But the moment one gets stuck or one gets light, it's going to spin that light tire, which is what it's demonstrating here. So it's showing you how it's transferring all of the, the engine's motion, right? The drive motion. Now, when you put a locker in, they both get equal traction. And um, the, here's another example of, you know, why you'd want. Uh, oh, this is the same one. You have to so go, we got to go, go like down, forward again. And then okay, so we'll just watch this Man, again. That guy didn't learn the first time. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it also helps to be in four wheel drive. It, yes. But again, you know, like if that was all articulated out, you'd only have one front wheel as well. So, all right, we're going to go over yeah, the other yeah, one. Right okay, so here's another uh, version that they have to show you. So a differential is designed so that when you go around a turn, it actually slows down the inside tire and speeds up the outside tire. So again, our buddies over at Eaton provided us this video, which is cool. So in turns, it's, sorry, it's a little slow. You can see the one tire goes forward and the other tire actually goes the other way. So, um, and then when locked, both tires are driving, right? So um, here you go. You know, you can, if you hit a wet spot, you know, you're, you're looking for more traction or mud or whatever that looks like or a hole, right? Um, it'll still drive the vehicle forward, so. And uh, obviously, you know, with a locker, you're, you know, pushing everything forward. So that's the benefit or backward, you know, in that case. So, all right. So I, I think that's it on this stuff. We can go back over okay. to the other side. We do have a couple more questions. Okay, sure. Any ideas for keeping the factory 392 cool, hitting 285 degree oil temps when plowing snow. Yes, I clear the grill when I stop. <laughs> Thanks again for the ride and aftershock at SEMA with my son. That was Kerry Richards. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, good to hear from him. Um, I know Hi, when, when we met out there, he was talking about the sand, so obviously it's snowing there now, so now he's got a whole other issue. Um, so uh, I don't remember if you and I talked about um, oil temperatures. But I'll, I'll give you this. Um, you, want, you really want your oil as close to 180 degrees as possible. The way it works is that 180 and below, whatever your mechanical device is, it'll virtually last forever. Once you start to go over 180, um, the breakdown happens quite quickly. 250 is the next landmark, and 300 is the next landmark. So at 250, you've reduced the lifespan to hours and at 300 you've reduced it to minutes now obviously 285 you're right in there and it's that's that's not good um so first off i'd be running synthetic second off i wouldn't do that for long um the the reality is jeep packed a big engine that's a lot of cast iron in a very tight compartment now to, to offset this they put a giant three inch exhaust i don't know if you've looked under there but it's a very free flowing exhaust because one of the things that makes an engine hot is if the exhaust can't get out um, the exhaust being you know 1200 degrees right so um, they did a good job at letting the exhaust out of there so the reality is you just got to not push it as hard um, you're you're really quite capped on being able to add additional cooling capacity um, you could try and add an oil cooler, but man, there's not a lot of room underneath that hood. So um, I know we're, we're building one right now um, in the next room over and uh, it is darn tight. So yeah, run synthetic and change it often. That's all I can tell you. I'd get a snow blower. A snow blower, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not plow with my 392. Yeah. Oh, actually my mic's over here. Sorry. Uh, I changed my oil cooler housing on the JKU for aluminum. 
I still see a little drop on trans vent hole after two weeks. How would you track and find where the oil is dripping? It's just a, a drop. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a couple of things. Um, one is all of the vents on your vehicle have a way of getting the oil level, whether it's the axle, the transfer case, the transmission, the engine, getting the oil level to its happy place. We, we talk about this all the time on our race cars, on our Jeeps, on whatever. Um, so the, the downside with overfilling something is that it builds too much pressure and then it pops the seals out or it leaks through the seals if it doesn't pop them out. So there, there is a fine line there and uh, quite a few of us will top off the tranny or the engine oil to make sure that when we climb something steep that it's not running dry. Um, and this is one of the, you know, you got to find that happy medium, right? If, uh, if we're talking about a good old fashioned oil leak, well, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Then what you need to do is clean it really good, right? Get some uh, gunk, get under there, clean it really good, drive it a little bit. Sometimes you don't even have to drive it. You just need to run it and you'll find it. But um, yeah, you got to clean it up. And it sometimes that requires removing skid plates and really being able to see up in there. But um, I hate oil leaks too. So yeah, I, I feel for you. That's, that's a big job to track that down. So Jamie's school of thought on this, by the way, is if it's still leaking, that means it has oil. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to back him up and say he, we, were, we heard that from you. <laughs> That's true. It's all true. That does sound like something I would say. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> when it stops leaking, then we got a problem. Any <laughs> recommendations on headers for an LS swap and a JKU? Uh, um, I have, if you go over to the gallery and uh, find Terramoto, I've got a, I tell who the manufacturer is. I don't know if the link's still there or not, but I, I say what they are. I might have some for sale. And Jamie might have some for sale. Jamie at genright.com. Yeah, do we? No, you know the, the ones we bought? So. The opposite size? Like, yeah, we, we don't yeah. officially sell headers, um, but, you know, we've overbought for some of our builds. So, yeah. Yeah, J-A-M-I yeah. at genright.com. Sure. Uh, 2004 LJ building, trace, building a tracer. Stock engine and automatic. Looking cool. to mount a tranny core, but concerned with mount in front of the radiator. Any other options, recommendations Behind mounting seat. the tranny core? <laughs> so if you ever see one of our vehicles, you're going to find all of those behind the seat. Um, unless it's Jeff. So Jeff put his in the front and moved his radiator in the back. So yeah, that's, your, that's, that's your other option. Um, yeah, you don't want to double stack that stuff. The only thing that I'm willing to double stack like that is the power steering cooler uh, because it occupies such a small space. And it's so much thinner. And it's so much thinner. So, um, yeah, tranny cooler puts out a lot of heat and you're preheating the air coming into your radiator. Not good. So, um, yeah, definitely want to be careful with that. I think there's pictures of and, that. And, and one and of one of our things, and by the way, all of our tranny coolers have their own fan. So that's a whole nother aspect of it. Yep. yep. And and if you mount it underneath, all it does is collect dirt and mud, and then it doesn't work anyways. It's so. just a liability underneath. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, what do you think about the overheating problem with the JKU 2005 that can be done? That can be done so that it does not have that problem. I have an aluminum radiator with new water pump and thermostat. Um, <clears throat> okay, so when it comes to overheating, you, you've got to look at uh, a couple of things. Most always it's the fan. And um, if you've got an electric fan, which you probably do, you don't realize how much amperage that draws. You, you got to look at it, the wires on it are quite big. And those wires, if you've done an aftermarket one, need to be as short as possible. And you need to have a big fuse on it and it needs to run straight to the battery. So um, don't, don't underpower that thing. I mean, if it's, if it's losing even a few volts by the time it gets to the fan, you're, you're talking about uh, maybe half the fan's cooling capacity. So, um, or capability. It, it needs a relay though, it, not, not just a fuse. Yes, it needs a relay. 
and and a fuse in case something happens to the fan. Um, so you know that I would check that. You definitely need a shroud. Oh, you know the other common thing everybody forgets, especially when they put in an aftermarket radiator, is um, they bolt they take out all that other stuff, they bolt it in, and air. When you look at it from the grill side, air can get around the radiator. So air takes the path of least resistance. So you need to plug, whether it's with a uh, rubber um, flap or foam or something, but you cannot allow any air. So if it comes through that grill, the only place for it to go is through the radiator. That is the most common mistake. It'll, it'll go up, over the top, down the bottom, around the sides. Like you really got to focus on that first and then track down the other stuff I mentioned. Yep. Uh, our buddy Tom Newcomb, uh, 2006, LJR with long arm kit, rear pinion angle, was it pointing at transfer case? Yeah. So I adjusted it so it does. I've been told that's not correct for a non double carton. For a non double carton? Uh, I mean, that's how mine is. So mine is too. Yeah. You can, you can change it up or down by you know a degree and see if it runs smoother or really really it's all about balance right so um just play with it a little bit and you know you you can do them like this that's quite extreme you know especially when you're looking at it you know from that angle but you can go a little high a little low keep in mind you know when you go forward that pinion is trying to uh actually push up right it's gonna it's gonna pull up so if you set it low it could go straight or it could go above you know I know nobody thinks they have flex in their suspension, but trust me, when you get on the gas, like everything's moving by a lot more than you think. So, yeah. Will Generate be at the California Convention February 18th? Oh, good question. Uh, you and I were just looking at the calendar. I know this weekend I've got an overland trip. Um, and then there was something... Oh, I think that's our Jeep night weekend. Here, yeah. Here. We got the Jeep and Hammer, so we'll probably be... Is that January or February? February. Oh, February? No, that's... Uh, oh, man. I think that's Valentine's Day weekend. That's probably not a... I don't know. We'll, we'll look at it. We'll look at it. <laughs> Josh. Yeah? Wants to know, can you do that dance again? Mm hmm I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Probably sounds, sounds like an inside like joke. Probably something you did on your trip. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Maybe there was alcohol involved. Maybe. How's the YJ coming along? How's the uh, the YJ is actually coming along pretty good. Um, we put the new leaves in. We added the shims. Remember the shim had fallen out. The U bolts were loose, so we got that situated. I know Jordan drove it during the uh, Christmas crawler Jeep parade, and uh, we discovered that it needs a new clutch master cylinder. So um, that's going to come into the shop here and get some of that done on it. Um, I also have an oil, a mystery oil leak somewhere on that thing too that I'm going to track down while it's in here. And uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I know we just mounted some brand new tires and wheels for Terramoto. Um, Aftershock will be here tomorrow getting the corner guards put on yeah. the final version so that's going to be sweet so what else we got we're all caught up on questions wow okay it's only 5 30. um okay so the reason the rc cars are here was because if the videos didn't show you enough about how a differential works um i was going to give you a couple of uh examples here and uh <clears throat> let's see so this this one is an open differential so can you see it pretty good james uh, uh, as good as i can see as good as you can. can okay so basically you can see here if i if i stop two tires it doesn't matter which two you you really only end up with one wheel drive right so that means if i articulate it right it's going to do the same thing so um and the, the, the reason you want a differential is so that when you go around a corner, right, that the inside tire slows down and the outside tire accelerates, right? That's, that's part of what makes a car smooth. Um, now, in our case, we're, we're doing other things with them that, that they weren't necessarily really designed for. And, and then we add a locker. So now when you add a locker, you know, both wheels are going to spin 
at exactly the same time, right? You can see the, the thing trying to take off, even though I've got the one in the air and the one on the ground. Same in the rear, it's the same way, right? Where this one, it was, it just spins the one that's in the air. So um, now again, when all the tires have traction, it, it works quite well. You can, you can actually see, you know, all four tires spin. Um, so again, I, it was just a good opportunity to talk about, cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, you don't need lockers. I can do it. You know, but, well, that's if everything has equal traction. Um, by the way, when you have lockers and you don't use them, what you're doing is putting extra stress on one item. So if you have a locker, you want to use it because now it's distributing the load so that everything is working together and you're not putting twice as much strain on the one less strong item. If that makes sense. What do you got? Any tips or tricks when changing over to LED taillights on a TJ? We did change the flash relay to LED, LED model, but sometimes blinkers come and go. Huh. Yeah, usually when you go from the analog to the digital, um, flasher unit, then um, that takes care of it. You can add a little bit of a resistor in there. Um, and I, I know a lot of the auto parts stores sell them. Um, I, I know AutoZone in particular is where we'll go to get some of those things. They're pretty good size, you know, the resistors. They're like, uh, you know, probably the, the, like this pen cap, you know, in size. So um, you just wire it in line in the, in the positive side line and, and then it'll it'll add enough resistance it'll stop doing that. Any plans to sell Generic branded Yeti cups like the yellow one on the <laughs> Well, the closest thing we have already is this guy. Um, and we do have these. We still have some left after Christmas. These are good for hot or cold. And um, they got a nice silicone seal on them. It's, it's basically the cheap knockoff. Um, and it's got the little thing, you know, to slide back and forth to get yourself a drink. So, um, these are two or three times the price of this. So, um, yeah, these are really nice and I, I like it, but you can save a lot I mean, of those ones will keep ice. I mean, I've had ice in it for two days. Yeah. The, yeah. The ones we sell. Yeah. So, so I know. They're nice. Uh, people want to know what kind of miles per gallon you got on aftershock on your trip. Um, I, I ended up right at 15. We had... Uh, That's not bad. It's not bad. On the way there, we had a tailwind, so I got like 17. And on the way home, I got less, so it averaged out at 15. Um, and I was going a little faster than the speed limit most of the time. So, yeah. Uh, Trying to make some time. Do you recommend aluminum radiator? Coolant 204 to 226 is good on JKU. I guess he's asking if that's good temperature range on a JKU. Um, okay, so um, yes, I recommend an aluminum radiator. Yes, that's probably a good temperature. So what, what happens now, and I, I just got asked this question, I don't remember who, if you and I were having that conversation or, or what, but the, the question was, uh, oh, I think I was talking to Joey. Why, why do most car manufacturers want the vehicles to run so hot? It's for smog. Okay, you do not want your vehicle to run hot. Like, didn't I just tell you a minute ago that you don't want your oil to go over 180, okay? The only way to do that is to have a thermostat that opens at like 160. So now, granted, it's winter time, right? So, but if we're talking about the summer or you're driving it hard, then, um, you know, you might even want to try and get a thermostat at like the 180 level. But from the factory, they're 195, 200 and it's all for smog. They just want that thing to run as hot as it can to burn off anything left. So, um, yeah, I mean, to only be 26 degrees over that, I'd call that pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark Lawrence, where can I get a Curry, Curry, Curry Dana 70 stickers for my axle covers? Oh, that's from us. <laughs> yeah, just uh, call in or shoot us an email and we can sell you a couple of those. What rock lights do we recommend? Um, we've got uh, we've got the Vision X rock lights right now, and I run. Uh, Jamie does too. I see him on his Jeep over there. The what they call the Pro Pod, and it's a it's Lexan. It's frosted, so the the light distribution is really 
broad and easy on your eye at night. Because a lot of them, you know, they, they, they give you a nice bright light, but it overexposes, right? So I've always tried to find one that's got a soft light to it so that you're not overexposing your eye. So, for what that's worth. You're all caught up on questions. Okay, I am working, that. all that said, I am working with Vision X on a brand new rock light set. Um, I just got them in my office, so I haven't even had a chance to open the box. So, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow, Jeff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll show all the sales guys tomorrow. Uh, um, can you get a Mickey Thompson 37 asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you just inquire about some? Yeah, I never heard about it. Oh. Uh, 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 well, I know, you know, like everybody at the holidays, a lot, certainly the tire manufacturers also closed down. So I know everybody's now this week Boy, back up and running. Yeah. That's for Boyne. Boyne, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, James, did you get the new 2023 schedule up on the website? Negatory. Oh, okay. So I just handed Jamie our 2023 calendar. So he'll be getting that up on the website tomorrow. So um, check that out and join us at any one of those events, okay? Um, the next event that we're all talking about around here is KOH. Yeah. And that is right around the corner. Um, Jordan's car, um, this is normal, by the way, is in a million pieces. And they're just, there's a whole team of people over there putting it together right now. They're working late every night, and uh, all of the manufacturers of the given parts, so whether it's Howe or J.E. Real or whoever, um, R1, have all um, freshened up or remanufactured their product uh, to put back on the race car so it's as good as it can be for race day. So, um, yeah, they're, they're just, I know Fox, we just got the shocks back. Um, so lots, lots and lots of stuff. So it's, it's really cool to see that process. And I think we talked about not next week, but the week after. Yep. Yeah. So in, uh, two Wednesdays from now, we'll be doing a special with, uh, Jordan and I, so, oh, and you and Peter. Yep. And we'll all be talking about KOH. So yeah, that'll be cool. So stay tuned for that. That'll be great. Um, and for those of you watching, um, don't forget on our website, we've got a under company, there's a tech talk web page. And from there you can download all of my PDFs, which are tool lists, shock sizing. There's all kinds of PDFs on there that you can download and uh, use, you know, as you will. Um, hopefully that stuff helps you. And if there's anything else you want, you know, just reach out to us and let us know. We're, we're happy to, uh, this, this is all part of sharing the information and making sure everybody is getting the straight scoop on this stuff, so, okay. Um, what else we got, Jeff, anything? We are... We got just a few more minutes, so if you have any more questions, fire them in. People say they look forward to the episode with Jordan. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, but we are all caught up on questions. Okay, maybe maybe we'll even do that over by the race car, or uh, I don't know, we, we can figure You're something out. Wi-Fi, yeah. yeah. So, um, behind me is a picture of a ARB. Um, a, an electric locker looks very similar, except for this copper tube would be a wire. Um, and uh, this looks like it's probably a nine inch unit based on the way that it looks like it came out the front. So, um, just again, you know, a differential is going to look much different with the little spider gears inside there. Um, these they would be buried down inside. This is one of the pins right here. And then there's another pin here that has the gears on it and then it locks together. So. There might be one more. Right there? Maybe. Just our. No. Nope. Yeah. Follow us. <laughs> uh, follow us, turn on your notifications, um, download our app. And um, if you don't see what you're looking for on our website, call in, we've got three guys there to answer the phones. And uh, if you're happy with our products, please go over and do a review. You just pull up the individual product and you just click on write a review and uh, you can just do a, a sentence or two. That'd be awesome. Appreciate that. What else we got? People are saying good show, Tony. Nice. Everybody can hear us okay? We finally got some decent audio. 
We've had decent audio for a long time. Ninety percent of the time we have decent audio. Uh, no. On icy, snowy roads, can loggers actually induce unwanted wheel slip? So, um, yes. So uh, that's why most people want a selectable locker. Um, so if you live in those kinds of conditions, um, you're going to want a selectable. You don't want something like a Detroit or a spool because then it'll actually, like we were showing on the video over there, when both tires turn at the same speed, it's going to force the slip and uh, could potentially put you in a bad situation. So that's why a lot of people do the selectable or, or even a limited slip because then what it does is there's some clutch packs in there that allow one tire to slip a few rotations while it builds up heat in the clutch packs and then it starts to give it a little bit of extra traction. So yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah. All caught up. All right, doing pretty good. Um, let's see. Um, oh, we have one more. Okay. How does Blaine like his six inch fender flares versus the four inch that most run? How did who like them? How does Blaine? Oh, Blaine. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why he did the six inch. I, I know he went with the wider, like full width axles yeah. and he was probably just worried about tire coverage. But, uh, yeah, most everybody likes the four inch even, yeah. and even the four inchers get into some stuff like out of Johnson Valley. So. That's why Jamie doesn't run any rear flares because yeah, you just get into them all the time. So when there's nothing to run over <laughs> <laughs> when it comes off. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't hear that story um, during our real hammers experience run, uh, my rear flare became loose. I guess I'd rubbed it on something and uh, then going up toward uh, sunbonnet it came off and i heard it like and i'm thinking oh man i hope it didn't cut my tire but it, it turned out it's fine so did you see it jim no i never saw it i was referring to there's nothing yeah. to use as traction oh yeah that, that's what you're talking about yeah but i did not see this I, nobody around. did they, they all came back and they go where'd your fender come I mean, off there's but, plenty of cracks for it to yeah. fall in so. yeah yeah so needless to say, I beat the daylights out of that for years, so it wasn't a surprise to me that it came off. Got a couple more minutes for any last minute uh, questions. Why don't you run the Baja Boss SX? Oh. XS. Um, okay. Is it the alternate? What is the SX, the sticky? That's, no, that's the big, it kind of looks more like a... Um, like the monster yeah yeah and um you know if i did more mud and stuff i i maybe i would but i do a lot more um street driving and i want a quieter tire you know the the baja boss mt is a very quiet tire and the at is even quieter so um you know i'm i uh and i like a lot of biting edges you know so when um you know you get those bigger lugs sometimes those can be okay but I honestly, you know, when I went back to s'more and all that, I, I didn't feel like the MT was a disadvantage at all. No. And they cleaned out nice. And I mean, I remember everybody coming over after they saw me go through an obstacle and going, what tires are those? You know, they, they were like amazed that a four door could do that stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like it's any kind of a disadvantage and instead a, a great advantage on the road for sure. So, and, and by the way, you know, um, I should tell all of you that, uh, not that the manufacturer recommends this, but when we go out to like Johnson Valley, um, you know, I'll air down to eight pounds and I don't think twice about going hundred miles an hour. So like we're sliding around doing all kinds of stuff. It's just the way it is. So, um, I'm not sure I'd want to do that on the SX tire. Cause that's, that's not designed for that. So, yeah. Can we still get quarter armor that has fenders welded onto them for the Jeep JK and JKUs? No, the, that's that's something you'd have to you know buy the stuff and do it yourself. But um, no, nah, we've given up on that. It's it's too much heat, and everything gets all warped. 
Um, it would really need to be something that's done like on the vehicle a little bit at a time. So and also so nice bolting fender on because if you ding it up real good. Yeah, then you just replace it. And the yeah. fine. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, you've been waiting for this question your whole life. Oh boy. Is there a story with the armadillo? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they can even see it. So um did you get this for me, Jamie? I did. I, I, yeah, Jamie yes. got me. So um, the story goes like this. Um, we've taken many trips to the East Coast. And uh, this is obviously a tiny one. Most of the time they're like this big, right? Um, and we see these little suckers. They, they, must be, they must be attracted to the headlights on cars. And they just walk right in front of them. So um, they're, they're smash flat all over the greater United States and uh, especially the Southwest. And um, Jamie and I thought it would be hilarious to find one that had been clipped and, and just kind of fallen over and we were gonna get the dog leash and the little neck thing and put it on there and I was gonna act like I was walking it, but we couldn't find one. Or if we found one, it was too late and there was no place to pull over with the motorhome. So he got me this little guy and uh, this rep represents the original body armor, right? So. There you go. That's that's the whole story. Right. <laughs> you guys talked about putting a leash on an armadillo. That had to be like at least our third. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure that was like one in the morning or something. Blaine has spoken. I bought the six inch because I didn't know any better. Also, I was concerned about the tire sticking out past the fenders. Out here in California, cops will take it that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, most cops are former military, and military people love Jeeps. So, so if you're not being an asshat, you're unlikely to get pulled over. At that time that you ran out of gas and you were on the sidewalk, and you cop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much. That was funny. Uh, well, we are... We got we're all caught up with questions. Okay. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I uh, hope everybody enjoys the new year. I know I'm looking forward to a great 2023. So uh, we've got lots of good tech talks planned for you. So definitely turn on those notifications and tune in every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks again. Good night.